Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Bible U. My name is Landon and today we're talking about when people have an overly pejorative view of Old Testament promises, which just means negative, so don't tune out because I used a big word. Hey guys, thanks for uh, joining us, hanging with us, tapping on this video. Be sure to hit the like button, comment, subscribe, all that jazz that people say on the YouTubes. And today we are talking about people that have an overly pejorative view of Old Testament promises. Um, the word pejorative means unnecessarily uh, negative um, without being rigorous. And I just see a lot of people quote Jeremiah 29, 11, which I'm sure we've all seen. I think it's beautiful. It says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord plans to give you a hope and a future and all that. And we see them in like the flower Instagram posts. And I see Christians mocking that um, and saying that that verse does not apply and that people should not quote that. And that is not my persuasion. I wanna to explain to you why I don't think that that is a valid argument in hopes that it will help you understand better God's promises in the Old Testament. So the typical argument against that would be, oh, well, the Jewish people were in exile at that point. Hmm, tell me again about when you were in exile in Babylon. And the problem with that is that if you go by that logic, then um, none of the things in the Old Testament can apply because you are not the person that was experiencing that. The reason that that's not what I believe and the reason that I think that quoting Jeremiah 29, 11 for Christians is good is for two reasons. Number one, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, it says of the Old Testament, these things were written for our example or instruction that we might not sin as they did, showing that the, New the Old Testament was written for us. It wasn't just written for the people at the time. It was written to be a part of the Bible for Christians of all time. Secondly, we see the Apostle Paul many times express the idea that Christians have been grafted onto the tree of Abraham meaning that we are a part of the legacy of Abraham. You may have sang the song in Sunday school when you were a kid. Father Abraham had many sons and I am one of them and so are you. And that song has incredibly accurate theology. We are the sons of Abraham, like the book of Romans climaxes in telling us, if we are followers of Christ. I don't have Jewish blood. I'm not... Um, a descendant of the people of Abraham, but I am a spiritual son of Abraham. And when I read the Old Testament, I'm reading it through the familial lens of the fact that I am a part of this spiritual family. When God makes promises to them, we have been grafted onto that tree. He didn't burn down the Israel tree and then build a new one called Christianity. He put Christianity onto the tree of Judaism, which is one of the things that Jesus taught. Sorry if that's a bit heady, but I hope that that helps you understand. And I hope it helps you just be a little bit more gracious with new Christians when they post verses from the Old Testament because they're so excited about how positive they are and the amazing promises that God has for them. Maybe it would help all of us to be a bit more rigorous in our study and understand before we get in a Facebook argument with our grandma's friend about whether or not the Jeremiah 29 11 flower post that she posted is truly theologically accurate. And maybe even if it isn't, we can just be a bit more gracious with each other. The world is watching and Jesus said they will know us. Uh, they will know that we know him by the way that we love each other. So I hope that helps and God bless you.